For food, time is both a friend and an enemy. Though there are many modern techniques for preserving food, the classical methods of pickling, air drying and smoking can produce a unique flavour very different from and even better than the flavour when fresh. Chinese people are still particularly fond of food preserved with traditional methods. The Hulan River originates in the lesser Hingan Mountains, meanders through a broad plain, and finally joins the Songhua River. This river has been nourishing the inhabitants of the eastern parts of the Songnan Plain for millennia. Every September, the region's fertile black earth produces the best rice in China. Soon after the rice is harvested, the fields are covered in snow. Local residents begin to store up Chinese cabbage for the long winter. Although it's no longer difficult to buy fresh cabbage in winter, they still like to make this special kind of pickled cabbage which is even becoming popular worldwide. Jin Xunji left her childhood by the Hulan River for Beijing as an adult. She misses the kimchi from her hometown. Jean Xu and Ji's parents have lived here for more than 40 years. Her mother sends some of what she makes to her children living in the city. Every year in July, Jin Xunji's mother plants Chinese cabbage in her vegetable garden. It's a good variety of cabbage with a tight heart and tender leaves. This variety is the best for making kimchi. Today, Jin Xunji is beginning to learn how to make kimchi from her mother. <laughs> Some salt is mixed in with the split cabbage to remove some of the water. Mm. 
The stone has been worn smooth from many years of use to weigh down the pickled cabbage. Making kimchi before the winter arrives is a top priority for the villagers. Work begins at dawn. The most important step is marinating the cabbage with chili peppers, apples, pears, fish sauce and shrimp. Each family has its own recipe, but the recipe always includes dried peppers. Korean people make glutinous rice cakes for major holidays. Steamed rice is first beaten with a wooden hammer until it becomes fluffy. The glutinous rice cakes and pickled cabbage go together well. Women in the village traditionally help each other make kimchi. The courtyard is filled with the fragrance of chili. Each family in the village has a vegetable cellar where the cabbage is stored to ferment for half a month. Everyone likes good food. Most people find the pickled cabbage more appealing than the fresh. And the longer the pickling time, the richer the flavor. Kimchi is the main dish for tonight's supper. Kimchi comes in many varieties and it can be served hot or cold. Every housewife believes her skill is the best. While Jean Shunji's parents are busy making various kinds of pickled cabbage in the crisp autumn weather by the Hulan River, people in the warm south 4,000 kilometers away have different tastes. The weather and environment in the south are very different from that of the north, and so are the methods for food preservation and preferred tastes. Cured pork is indispensable for the people of hot and humid southern China. Originally, people cured fresh pork when the weather was hot to prevent it from going bad. But today, it's served year-round and even at formal dinners. One typical way to serve cured pork is steamed with rice. 
Making rice with cured pork is complicated and time consuming. The temperature must be precisely controlled to ensure success. For the best results, the rice should be harvested three to nine months before use. The rice is first cooked in a crock over a hot fire, then slowly cooked to allow the meat's juices to permeate the rice. Rice with cured pork is an ideal winter dish. Artian's family owns Huxing, a cured meat store. For 10 years, Artian has been the busiest person in his family in the morning. The store has built up a good reputation in the 60 years since its founding. Artian, his father, and his uncle jointly operate the business. Cured duck is very popular among older people in Hong Kong. The meat is tender and the bones are crunchy. It is best for making duck with rice. Artian's store becomes a great place to visit in the autumn and winter for its exotic aromas. The most famous item in the store is sausage made in the family's own workshop. To ensure the quality of their products, the store's workshop has always been located near the store. The workshop still makes pork sausages by hand. The casing must be stored for a year before it can be used. After the casing is filled with cured pork, holes are poked in the casing to release the air. Workers tie off small sections with string to make neat small links. It takes an experienced worker to do this well. In the past, sausages were sun-dried before storage. Because it's hard to get them dry enough in the humid weather, they're now dried in an oven. A week later, the fragrance of the sausages fills the entire workshop. Gumjao 很多現在的年輕人都不是說太喜歡做一些很辛苦的工作都有份經歷的一個行業,也令我更加會有動力去繼續做下去. The Chinese have been enjoying cured meat for many centuries. An ancient and primitive kind of cured meat is found in a mountainous inland area of China far from Hong Kong. Xiangxi in western Hunan province is located on the line between eastern and western China, where the only roads are poor, and run through steep mountains. We 
们苗疆的饮食是传女不传男的。我这一套一整套饮食的话，全部都是我妈妈传给我的。Long Yi, who grew up in this remote mountain village, had always been curious about the outside world. When the rice blooms in the eighth lunar month, people of the Miao ethnic group make salted fish. Long Yi's brother is making a barrel of sturdy Chinese fur for salted fish. 做这做腌鱼的话呢，它必须要选合化鱼以外，还有一个非常重要的环节，它就是什么呢？必须要有一个非常好的桶子。The slats are tightened by hoop to prevent the fish from spoiling. The so-called rice blossom fish is, in fact, a kind of carp raised in rice paddies that like to eat the rice blossoms. The first step in making salted fish is to stir fry some glutinous rice, the main seasoning. Sinchen的上好的,这红辣椒,就刚从地里面摘的。这个黑生姜,因为生姜它去腥。还有山赖。木姜子是必须要的,木姜子一般都是到山上采的。还有就是盐。Several layers of fish are pressed with a heavy stone and are ready to eat one month later. Winter in Tianxi is very cold. As winter approaches, every family prepares cured pork. 非常均勻的切成一塊一塊的,要把它磨上鹽,用苗家自己釀的米酒,把那個鹽啊融掉。Xiangxi has an abundant supply of timber. People use the hardwood of the tea tree or plum tree to smoke the pork. They hang salted pork in the fireplace, 
and burn pine cones, tea tree shells and tangerine peels to give the cured pork a nice aroma. The best way to preserve cured pork is to bury it in unshelled rice to keep it dry and away from sunlight. To cook it, it's placed over a fire. It's then washed in rice water. One of the common ways the Miao people serve cured pork is stir-fried with dried turnip. <laughs> to the Miao, salted fish and cured pork are a symbol of a long lasting tradition as well as food. Yibanso 鱼肉, pork and salted fish helped a young Miao girl discover a brand new world. People living deep in the mountains in Huizhou also love salted fish. Huizhou的臭鱼呢是徽菜的一个代表菜。现在这个臭鱼的制作在鳕鱼方面是相当讲究的，一定要选用这个三四月份桃花盛开的季节，这个季节的鳜鱼是最肥，鱼质是最
Salted pork is cut into thin slices on a camphor wood chopping board and left on the board until the wood absorbs the juices from the meat. The final dish is not greasy and has a subtle camphor aroma. Every family in the Yellow Mountain area hangs pork in their courtyard to make ham and salted pork. Chef Yeh believes that the ham from his hometown is the best in the world, even though he knows that the ham from nearby Jinhua Zhejiang is better known. The lean and fragrant meat of Jinhua ham is red marbled with white. Jinhua ham is usually divided into five parts. This is said to be the best part. The famous Jiangsu and Zhejiang dish, fiery square dipped in honey, uses the best part, the fiery square, known as Jinhua, as the upper square. The long preparation begins by coating the ham with honey and then cooking it. The middle square is usually cut into strips and cooked with tendons and sea slugs to make the dish suitable for banquets. The other parts are used to make soup. Jiangsu, Zhejiang and Guangdong chefs use a broth prepared with Jinhua ham in their cuisine. The traditional way of making ham is greatly affected by the natural environment. Jinhua is surrounded by mountains, so climate and geographic conditions are similar to those in Huizhou. Some people think that Huizhou's chopping board flavor was the prototype for Jinhua ham. According to a folk tradition, Jinhua ham first appeared during the Song Dynasty over 1,000 years ago, when it was included in the rations of Song army soldiers on expeditions. People now use modern imported equipment to make ham, which has elements of both Chinese and Western flavor. Each pig's leg is massaged to ensure that the meat ferments uniformly. Heat and moisture must be carefully controlled during salting so that the leg absorbs the right amount of salt, which is less than in the past, to produce a healthier product. The salted pig's leg is allowed to ferment at least 30 months, which gives the meat a rich aroma. Some traditional ham dishes have been updated by reducing the salt content to make them healthier. And some new types can be eaten raw. Jinhua ham and indeed Jinhua itself are both changing with the times. Urbanites, meanwhile, often miss traditional foods. Older Shanghai residents are familiar with the dried foods from Jiangsu and Zhejiang, sold in the Sanyang Southern Grocery Store. During Chinese New Year of 2012, the store sold 13,000 traditional Jinhua hams. Many types of salted and cured meat from Jiangsu and Zhejiang can be found in the store. The store sells 
braised ducks with soy sauce from Hangzhou, salted pork from Shanghai, salted croaker from Wenzhou, dried bamboo shoots from Ningbo, and dried fermented mustard leaf from Xiaoxing for making steamed braised pork. The store is like a big exhibition of the food culture of Shanghai, a city of immigrants. Anyone who hasn't tasted Sister Wang's cuisine is not a real connoisseur. Sister Wang can cook Ningbo style, Xiaoxing style, and Shanghai style dishes, such as pork stewed in soy sauce, shrimp stewed in soy sauce, sauteed butterfish, braised spring bamboo shoots, and fried crab in wheat flour paste. <laughs> One of Sister Wang's best dishes is called drunken crab. People in Jiangsu and Zhejiang have been preserving food and alcohol since ancient times. Eventually, it became a cooking style. Drunken crab and drunken shrimp are favorites of the local residents. Strong liquor is poured over the fresh water crabs, which helps release the silt. Every cook has his own recipe. Sister Wang uses high-quality rice wine as part of her own secret recipe. Preservation in an airtight container is very important too. Sister Wang places raw meat in a jar filled with distiller's grains. In 10 days, the meat is ready to be cooked. Distillers grains not only help preserve food, but also give it a nice flavor. Dehydration is used to make dried scallops and mushrooms. Some things become tastier than when they are fresh. Dried laver, a kind of seaweed, 
is a common foodstuff in China, and it's found in many snacks popular in Fujian province. Xiapu, the oldest county in eastern Fujian province, has many bays in its long coastline. Local fishermen use them to cultivate labor. Today, Lean Range War, a Xiapu fisherman, is setting up more bamboo stalks in his ocean field. <laughs> Bamboo stalks from the mountain are prepared by breaking the partitions between sections before standing them up on the seabed. It's not easy making these 16 meter long stalks stand up on the bottom of the sea. has to inspect his field every day. When the tide goes out, the nets appear above the water, exposing the young labor to light and air. The nets disappear when the tide comes in again. Harvesting of the labor takes place between high and low tide. its flavor, laver must be cooked, and this changes its color and its cellular structure. Lean Rangewar has other work to do after the harvest. The actions of nature and man keep changing the scenery. At 5 a.m., fishermen in the Kouhu Township of Yunling County, Taiwan, get up to do a job that is vital for their annual income. The salted row of the snake-headed fish is a special delicacy from the southwestern coast of Taiwan. Because it's so dark in color, Japanese people call it Tang Ink. They regard it as one of the world's best delicacies. Snake-headed fish roe has in fact been one of the most valuable sea products from Taiwan for centuries. For about 10 days around the winter solstice, mature snake-headed fish move from the north along the coast to the warm area southwest of Taiwan to lay eggs. But wild fish stocks have dramatically declined over the past 10 years, so Taiwan fishermen have begun to raise the fish themselves. The row of the snake-headed fish is very expensive, so local fishermen call their harvesting time the golden season. 
People in Kohu Township raise snake-headed fish, which has to mature three to four years before the roe can be extracted to ensure the roe is large and plump. This region has become Taiwan's largest producer of the roe. The extracted roe is soaked in brine four to five hours, pressed with boards to squeeze out water, and then dried in the open air. The dried row is plump and transparent with a yellow hue. The traditional roasting method best retains the original flavor. Before roasting, rice wine is sprinkled over the row. The roasting time must be carefully controlled so the row turns golden yellow and gives off a strong tantalizing aroma when it is done. Adding daikon and green garlic can enhance the delicate flavor. Many restaurants have developed new ways to prepare the roe, serving it with vegetables, the meat of the snake-headed fish, and other things. Food connoisseur once said that the worst thing a cook could do was forget the salt. The salt is used to preserve food as well as enhance its flavor. Some scientists say that the history of humankind has followed the taste of salt. Residents of Da Ao, famous for salt production, make various kinds of salted fish. Their traditional local products are a continuation of the history of their local delicacies. Residents in Da Ao are prouder of their shrimp paste and shrimp sauce than they are of their salted fish. Shrimp paste is great for stir-fried dishes and steamed pork. This 100-year-old store has been managed by four generations of the same family. Guo Xiaofen, now 76, is a native of Da Ao who's been making shrimp sauce for over 50 years. Making shrimp paste and shrimp sauce requires only salt and silvery shrimp. And preparation is also very simple. The salt and shrimp are pounded to a pulp, then spread on bamboo sieves and finally dried in the sun. Many people today want to reduce their salt intake, but this 100-year-old store still makes shrimp paste and shrimp sauce the old way. This old wooden barrel used to hold nearly three tons of shrimp paste. The store is now managed by Guo Xiaofen and her son. Hello. 
Guo Xiaofan married into the Zhang family when she was 20. After which, she and her husband managed the store until he died in 2011. Da Ao is ideal for enjoying the sunset. But for Guo, it's more than just the natural scenery. It's winter, and Jin Xunji is sowing the seeds in her Beijing garden that she brought back from her home village by the Hulan River. Her refrigerator is also filled with special foods that she brought back. <laughs> now, Jin Xunji can make pickled cabbages herself. It is the taste of salt, the taste of the mountains, the taste of the wind, the taste of clouds, the taste of time, and the taste of human emotions. They've been closely tied to the land, the people, hard work and persistence for a very long time. They meet at the tip of the tongue and within the heart.